Take your Bibles and turn to these two chapters, Ezekiel 38 and 39. To say that there's conflict and controversy over these two chapters is like the underestimated statement of the year. In fact, last week when people knew that I was going to speak on this, you caught me out there in the lobby and several of you mentioned some outstanding books that have been written and do you agree with so-and-so? And do you agree with so-and-so? Well, you know, I agree with God that what he wrote is true. I may not understand it the way I should, but I'm going to work hard at it until I get it. This is coming, folks. It's never happened before. It's kind of like Isaiah 17, 1 about Damascus. Did you know some Christians in Damascus said yesterday that maybe we're going down like Isaiah said? One of the largest, oldest cities in the world, it has never been destroyed. And God says in Isaiah 17, 1, that it'll be a heap of ruins. Well, let me tell you, the Syrian rebels are making it a heap of ruins. Bashar Assad fighting back, killed 155 women and children today. To let him know that he's also got chemical weapons, which is now a big discussion in the Obama administration and with the European leaders. What if he has the largest cache of chemical weapons of mass destruction in the world? He's crazy enough to use it. This is a strange time. There are many reasons why I believe we could have an outbreak of a war before we get home tonight. Many reasons. I pray for the peace of Jerusalem, but I know that peace will only come when the Prince of Peace comes. Amen? Now, I'm going to read this in segments because I think it's easier to get a hold of. Ezekiel's name means God is my strength, and the whole book suggests that. He was a priest of the family of Zadok. He was carried away into captivity to Babylon in 597 B.C. That's some 11 years before Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed by Babylon. He was located, according to the Bible, at Babylon Tel Aviv. Isn't that interesting? Uh, that's what a lot of people think is the capital of Israel today on the Mediterranean, Tel Aviv. Well, they named it after all the Babylonian Jewish captives who lived there. It was on a canal that was built around the ancient city of Babylon. There's one phrase in Ezekiel that you should know. It appears 70 times in this one book. They shall know that I am the Lord. Amen? All that's here, all the prophecies, all the battles, all the things that are said, it's all intended that we would know that our God is the Lord of all, and he's the only God there really is. So we're going to start with the first six verses, and we're going to look at the recognition of those who will invade Israel, the recognition of those who are going to invade Israel. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and prophesy against him. And say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshech and Tubal, and I'll turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws. I'll bring thee forth and all thine army, horses and horsemen, all of them clothed with all sorts of armor, even a great company with bucklers and shields, all of them handling swords. Wow. Persia, Ethiopia. And Libya with them, all of them with shield and helmet. Gomer and all his bands. The house of Togarma of the north quarters and all his bands. And many people with thee. 
Will you join me in a moment of prayer? Father, we ask that you would guide us by your Holy Spirit as we study this amazing prophecy of what's going to happen in the last days of planet Earth. God, help us to be ready to understand the seriousness of what we're studying. I pray for those that may not be sure of their own relationship with you, that they might turn to you before it's too late. We thank you, Lord. In the blessed name of our Lord Yeshua, we pray. Amen. Now, one of the first things that we have to study as well as argue over, I don't like to do it, but we have to, is the identity of Gog. Now, I've already explained to you what I believe. That's a picture of Joseph Stalin who killed over 30 million Jews and Christians, a lot more than Adolf Hitler. The mighty Russian empire, the Russian bear. Now here's the problem we have in identifying him. Gog, the land of Magog, Magog means from Gog, from his land. It mentions these chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, you notice that in verse 2, and it repeats it again in verse 3. Now, there was a great Hebrew scholar of the past named Gesenius, and he identified the words chief prince with modern Russia. He believed that the word Meshek should be identified as Moscow, and the word Tubal with Tobolus. In other words, he saw in the Hebrew words what he called phonetic equivalents in the Russian language of today. He wasn't the only one. There are many scholars throughout history who have identified Gog and Magog, his land, with the ancient Scythians who are also mentioned in the New Testament in Colossians chapter 3, verse 11. We know from history already that the Scythians are the ancestors of present-day Russia and some of the former Soviet republics. I was reading in Flavius Josephus this remark. He said, the Scythians delight in murdering people and are little better than wild beasts. They think it's their duty to uphold their national customs. Tertullian, the great church historian, said of the Scythians, it's a custom among their tribes for every deceased member to be eaten by his relatives. Wow. There are several things I want to point out to you before I give you what I believe is a correct answer on this. One, we have a historical connection. A historical connection. Oh. Before that is our biblical connection. Uh, the biblical connection is that we have a lot of Scripture about Meshach, Tubal, and so forth. And I'm not going to take the time tonight, but simply tell you that in any concordance, you can study about these names, Meshach, Tubal. And uh, it's interesting that Tubal and Meshach are listed among the nations whose graves are seen as the result of God's judgment. The other nations include Asher, or Assyria, Elam, which is Iran today, and Egypt, and Edom, which is Jordan. Now, in addition to that, number two, we have this, in addition to a biblical connection, we have a geographical connection, the land of Magog. What we do know in Ezekiel 38 and 39 is that it's north of Israel. We need to be careful in identifying that because all the way through ancient history, in fact, even to the modern day, north could be what looks on a map like east. Uh, that's very important. Uh, you have the giant Saudi desert. Nobody's going to go across that with very many people. But when you go north, you go to Syria, which is north 
east and a long border with Israel. Syria has a long border with Iraq, which is, of course, uh, the ancient Assyrians. And then they have a long border with Iran. Interestingly, Iran is also thought of as being north. But I think because it mentions many nations with them, this is only a sampling. And I believe that north is north. You say, wow, we paid for that to come all the way and hear you say north is north. But I think we need to be careful about what we do say. Uh, there's a third issue, uh, the political connection, and this is what I want to talk to you about. It says, chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. The word chief is our common Hebrew word, rosh, R-O-S-H. Now, when we come to a Jewish New Year beginning, the first festival is called Rosh Hashanah. The word ha, the, shana, year. First of the year, also known as the Feast of Trumpets. I believe that Jesus was born on Rosh Hashanah. And you can find that article on our website and see the evidence for it. I think it's pretty strong. But here's the problem. We have prince, which is the word sar. For instance, in Israel, the tour company we use is called Sar El. It's now, by the way, the biggest tour company in Israel, and they're all Messianic Jewish believers. But anyway, uh, they're called Sar. Rosh, Sar, Meshach, Tubal. What's the problem here? The problem is, is the word chief, Rosh, an adjective modifying sar, which is prince, meaning the head prince or the chief prince, or is it a noun? And this is an incredible discussion. Um, but the fact is that there is no record, either in the Bible or outside of the Bible in ancient times, of the word chief being an adjective. So if I say on the basis of all grammatical studies, all historical studies, geographical, political, you name it, what is the point of this verse? And the point is that it is referring to a people, a nation. Rosh, also in history known as the Rus people, R-U-S, uh, that is a noun that fills the pages of ancient history. Now, unfortunately, Americans don't know a lot about ancient history unless you specifically studied it in university or college, which I happen to have done. And it was very fascinating because of so many things parallel the Bible. I'm going to show you before we're done that it is very possible that there's a connection with the United States of America in this passage. Very possible. And I absolutely love the way you're looking at me now. Oh, no. Is he going off the deep end? Oh, my. What's happening here? Hang on. We're going to get into some interesting stuff. Now, we're also going to look at the involvement of other nations in this invasion. Who do we have? Look at your Bible. Five of them are mentioned here, but later in the chapter in the discussion, there are many other nations and peoples with them. First is Persia. Whenever you list a list of nations in the Bible or ancient history, the first one is usually the leader. Well, that's interesting in the light of where we've come. It was originally Elam, which is a shoestring relative of Abraham. But the Elamites, which became a very powerful empire, were overtaken by the Medes and Persians. And that became a giant empire of the past. But today, we know them as Iran. It became the Islamic Republic of Iran in 1979. So it wasn't too long ago. Not only Persia... Uh, by the way, is mentioned 29 times in the Bible. 
mostly in Esther and Ezra and Daniel. But we have also Ethiopia. This is not the Ethiopia of today, which is more isolated from what it was in ancient times. In ancient times, it also was the country we call Sudan today. Sudan is one of the most violent, anti-Israel, anti-American uh, countries in the world. Last August at the U UN General Assembly, a brand new country was formed, number 193. And that brand new country were primarily Christians escaping Islam's attacks. And they have now a new country called Southern Sudan. And you should know that without much fanfare in the world, I'm sorry to say, uh, the Islamic hordes of northern Sudan are attacking the south as I speak. And many have already been killed. Sudan is a part of what they want to build as an Islamic caliphate. The word caliphate is like the word empire. They had one before World War I. It was run by the Ottoman Turks. They were in control of the Middle East and Israel for over 400 years. They were conquered in World War I, and Britain and France are the ones primarily dividing up the Middle East in terms of the boundaries that most of them had immediately after the war. But Ethiopia would be Sudan and another country that if you put it with Iran, we have a dangerous confederacy. We also have mentioned Libya. Isn't it interesting that hardly anybody in America thought of Libya until all this trouble came over Gaddafi and uh, the war that was going on in Libya. And then it became very important to us when we saw Americans killed in a terrorist attack at Benghazi. There's a lot of interesting things happening, folks, that are not being put together by our news agencies because they, they're on another uh, a line of thought. They're not even thinking about the Bible at all. In addition, we have Gomer six times in the Bible, and he comes from Japheth. Remember, there are three sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Japheth seemed to be the one that was more uh, politically oriented, economically, militarily, conquering vast territories of land. Gomer, some see as Germany. I, I have never been able to prove that connection. But his son is Togarma, which is one of them. Togarma, without any question, is a part of Turkey. And Turkey now has become a major player in the so-called attempt to have an Islamic caliphate empire throughout the entire Middle East. And Turkey and Iran and Egypt and Libya, they're all a part of it, and Sudan also. There's a lot about those countries in the Bible. It'd be good if you took the time uh, to study it. Now, um, in addition to this, I want you to notice the reasons, according to the Bible, uh, for this invasion of Israel. The reasons for this invasion of Israel. What does the Bible say, actually, uh, are the reasons? And the first one I want to give you is a prophetic reason. What is the prophetic reason? And the answer is very simple from verse 1. It says, and the word of the Lord came unto me. That phrase is 47 times in Ezekiel uh, out of a total in the Bible of 92. 47 of them right in Ezekiel. Uh, the words, thus saith the Lord, appears 415 times in the Bible, but 127 of those are in Ezekiel. In other words, out of all the Hebrew prophets, the one book that testifies to being prophetic, coming directly from the mouth of the Lord to his servants, the prophet, is Ezekiel. Fascinating. The Jewish people today tell us that everything one needs to know 
about what's going to happen in the Middle East can be summarized in Ezekiel. And the last nine chapters uh, in Ezekiel talk about the coming temple of the Messiah being built is a remarkable section of God's Word that very few people ever touch. I have found so little information, even in the commentaries on Ezekiel, about the last nine chapters. You say, well, where are we going to get information? I thought you would ask. Out on the back table, we have an MP3, which saves you a little money. MP3 is a laser CD. You can get more on it than a regular CD. We have the entire book of Ezekiel on MP3. Amen? So out of all the stuff I've got in Ezekiel, my favorite is my own messages. Now that shows you how sick I am. 